Hello and welcome to today's video. I've got something a little bit different for you today, but I think you're going to really enjoy it. So we're going to be doing a gut health supplements tier list. So we're going to go through all of my favorite gut health supplements and we're going to rank them from S tier to D tier. So maybe you can figure out what your next supplement that you want to try might look like. I'm also really interested to hear if you've tried any of these things in the past and if they've been helpful for you. And also if you think there's anything that should be on this list that I've missed out. So let's get started. This is what the tier list is going to look like. And I have our list of supplements down here. So I know these are a little bit hard to read, but I'm just going to read them off for you now. I'll make sure that I talk about them and tell you the name as we go through. So we've got apple cider vinegar as a supplement, 11 strain probiotics, bone broth powder, butyrate supplement, collagen peptides, colostrum, DGL, which is like a licorice root, digest gold, digestive enzymes, D-lactate free formula, probiotics, inulin. This is sort of a step in for prebiotics. I'm gonna do a whole other video where we talk about different types of prebiotics, but this is just prebiotics in general. L-glutamine, lipogold digestive enzymes, a magnesium supplement. We've got magnesium bisglycinate here, but again, I'm gonna do another video just for magnesium supplements, but this is magnesium. Mega IgG 2000, omega-3s, and zinc carnosine. So I think this is gonna be really exciting. I'm really interested to rank all of these different supplements and tell you a little bit more about them. There might be some here that you think, wow, these are missing. Why are they not here? So maybe you're thinking about digestive bitters or Tudka or ox bile or sunflower lesser thin and I, I can understand what you're saying like these are supplements that could be on this tier list but I'm actually going to put these in a liver health video because these supplements more directly impact our liver health and although our liver health does directly impact our digestive health I want to stick them in a different video so those ones are going to be coming but if you do think I've missed any digestive supplements let me know and I'll be sure to do another one where we add them in there too so this is kind of a little bit tricky actually there's so many good choices I'm not exactly sure where to start but I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the ones that I, I absolutely know where I want to put them already. So first of all, I'm going to take the D-lactate free probiotics from Custom Probiotics. I'm going to stick them straight in S tier. These have to go in S tier. There's no question about it for me. The reason that I'm going to put these in S tier straight away is they are so well tolerated. So many people say that they've tried probiotics and they don't work for them. And then they try these probiotics and they just work. It's like magical. And your microbiome has a significant, probably the biggest impact on your overall digestive health. So if we can correct this, you're going to see the benefits. Something that can be tricky though is whenever you're taking a probiotic, a die-off reaction is possible. So you always have to make sure that you adjust your dose correctly. This is where the Goldilocks can come in. The Goldilocks zone is something that I developed that helps you understand what your optimal dose is. We have another video that talks just about the Goldilocks zone. You can check that out here. I'd suggest you go watch it after the video though, because this video is going to be full of some really good stuff. So D-lactate free probiotics, they're going straight into S tier. So next, we're going to take our butyrate supplement. Where do you think this is going to go? I think this is going in, I actually think this is going in D tier. I was thinking it's a split between C or D. I think it has to go in D tier. Thought process behind this. I've only had one client. I've had thousands of clients. I've only had one client that said butyrate really made a big difference for them. The thing about butyrate is it's a postbiotic. This means that it is a substance that is produced by our probiotic organisms. So in my mind, I'm always thinking, Instead of taking the supplement, how can we address the dysfunction in the body? How can we correct the dysfunction in the body itself? So if butyrate is a postbiotic, then the way we would correct this with is literally as simple as equation as probiotic plus prebiotic. So if we take the right probiotics and we give them the right food, they will produce these postbiotics for us. Now, if something like goes in D tier or C tier and it works for you, do let me know. I'd be really interested to hear, but it doesn't mean these are bad supplements. It's just all supplements cost money. You know, you only have so much of a budget that you can spend on healing. And I want to give you an idea of where I think your money is going to be best spent and where I think you're most likely to get a good return on your investment. And I just haven't seen it with butyrate supplements. I think for a very similar reason, I'm actually going to take this mega IgG and I think we're going to put it it's split again between D and C. I think it's going to go in C tier. I think Mega IgG is going to go in C tier. So Mega IgG is an immunoglobulin supplement. So immunoglobulins are like little immune molecules that we produce, especially in our digestive system. And they have several functions here. One of them is that they modulate our immunity and they are a part of our immune system, but they also can act as a binder. So if you've got endotoxin or different toxic substances, either in your diet or being produced in your digestive system, immunoglobulins can help to bind these substances and excrete them so that we don't absorb them. The same thing as before though with the butyrate. You're supposed to produce immunoglobulins yourself. They're a part of your immune 
immune system. So I'd be more interested in trying to figure out how can we address this dysfunction from a root cause level? How can we figure out why your immunoglobulins aren't being produced correctly and correct that dysfunction and get your body producing those immunoglobulins again? So for that reason, it's going in, in C tier. Again, not a bad supplement, but I'd, I prefer to go for a root cause. So next, we're going to take zinc carnosine. And th this one is tricky because the thing is, zinc is an essential nutrient for the body, which I'm tempted to put essential nutrients in A and S because you can't function without them. Zinc carnosine itself as well. Carnosine, this is a form you normally get from meat. You can hear zinc carnosine, carna. It normally comes from meat. This can be really helpful if you have like gastritis or ulcers. I can't, I can't put it in C tier because it's an essential nutrient. It cannot go that low. So it's, it, I'm, I'm drawn between B and C tier here. I think it's going to have to go in B tier. I think zinc carnosine is going in B tier. So the thing is, if you, if your digestive problems are caused by a nutritional deficiency, correcting that nutritional deficiency is literally going to fix it and you're addressing the root cause. But at the same time, you kind of would be wanting to try and get as much of this from food as possible. But you get this tricky situation. This is making me think maybe, maybe zinc needs to go into A tier because when your stomach lining gets damaged, you stop producing as much stomach acid because your body is intelligent your your body isn't it's not stupid it's not just going to produce loads of acid and destroy your stomach lining it's not going to do that on purpose it's not going to do that intentionally and it will limit the amount of acid that it produces so that it doesn't destroy itself but the thing is if we don't have enough stomach acid we're then not able to absorb any of our other minerals so that's it that includes zinc but that's also all of them including the trace minerals so I'm actually bringing this up to A tier. I'm going to stick this in A tier just because it can really help address the root cause of low stomach acid for many people. Next on the list, we're going to look at collagen peptides. They're going in D tier, I think. The thing is, my thought process here is there's nothing you really get from collagen peptides that you can't get from bone broth. And we have bone broth here. So by my logic, collagen has to go below bone broth. And I think bone broth can only go in C tier because the thing is, this is, I really think that supplements should be used when we can't get things nutritional through the diet and you can make bone broth at home it's honestly it's so easy if there's one thing that you should learn to do that's going to save you money that's going to help you with healing your gut that's that's really worth investing in and you know it's not as hard as making your own fermented foods or doing like sourdough bread and all these complicated things bone broth is actually really easy to do at home so i can't put bone broth higher than a c tier so bone broth has to go in the c and the collagen I think is worse than bone broth. It's like they're almost the same, but the collagen peptides are just slightly worse. So they have to go down here. They have to go in detail. So if you don't know how to make your own bone broth, you should seriously consider learning it. It's such a, a really good life skill. And it, it, it's honestly, it's so easy. It's worth it. You're going to save yourself a lot of money too. And if you, if you like to batch things, you can batch cook this and just leave it in your freezer. It's honestly so easy. Please just learn how to make your own bone broth. So th this means we kind of have to do L-glutamine as well now because L-glutamine is tied in with this. And for the for very similar reasons, I kind of feel like this has to go detail. I I've never really spoken to someone and they're like, yeah, I took L-glutamine and it changed everything for me. I just haven't really seen it. And, it and even if that was true, you can just get L-glutamine in broth. That's one of the highest amino acids that you have in broth. So Look at the GAPS diet, look at meat stock, look at bone broth. If you want more L-glutamine, you really want to be making the broth with the, the connective tissues and the cartilage. So instead of it just being bones, you actually want the skin, the connective tissue, think like the chicken feet, the necks, the stuff like that. That's where you're going to get lots of the L-glutamine. So again, for the same reason, just because bone broth is in this one, the, it can't be higher. Glutamine has to go into detail. How are you finding this so far? I'm actually finding this, this really interesting. I, I was looking forward to making this video for a really long time, but I couldn't figure out how to get the little, the little pictures in the thing. So I, I figured it out. Like I'm good at the healing stuff, right? Technical stuff, not, not for me, but I figured it out. And I'm, I'm actually having a blast. Are you enjoying the video so far? Let me know. Let me know in a comment below if you're enjoying. So next, let's look at apple cider vinegar. Apple cider vinegar, oh, this is a good one. If you were doing this, where would you be putting apple cider vinegar? Tell me. Um, I'm thinking apple cider vinegar probably in A tier, I think. I think apple cider vinegar is amazing. But then again, you can just use apple cider vinegar as real apple cider vinegar. So for that reason, I think I have to bring it down into the B tier because apple cider, I would say, if we're looking at apple cider vinegar itself, I would put it in A tier because it's cheap. It's so, like the benefits of apple cider vinegar are insane. It's, it's a probiotic, especially, if the, so this is Bragg's. This is Bragg's apple cider vinegar. If you're getting a, a raw, unpasteurized apple cider vinegar with the mother, it's probiotic. It's got probiotics in there. It's got enzymes in there. So it's a digestive enzyme supplement as well. All vinegars contain 
contain acetic acid. And if you have acetic acid, before you eat any carbohydrates at all, you will significantly reduce your insulin spike, which means you'll reduce your blood sugar spike and your body will just be able to assimilate those carbohydrates so much better. So that's not really a gut health benefit. So I don't know if I can really consider that factor in here, but at the same time, blood sugar dysregulation causes stress. Stress increases your leaky gut. So you kind of, this is the thing, the healing is holistic. So it's really hard to isolate this and just look at the gut health benefits. But think about this, it boosts your stomach acid, it boosts your digestive enzymes, it stimulates bile flow, it's high in malic acid, which helps break down gallstones. So again, this is more what I would talk about in a liver supplement tier list video, but you can't help but acknowledge the benefits. So apple cider vinegar, if it was apple cider vinegar itself, I think it would be in A tier, but because this is a supplement, I'm gonna put it in B tier, because it's just sometimes not practical. You know, if you're eating out at a restaurant, you can't just bring apple cider vinegar with you in a, in a bottle. I mean, I suppose you could, but I, I'm not doing that, so I bet you're probably not doing that too. So for that reason, it's going in, it's going in B tier. Solid supplement, do strongly recommend it. I've used it, my wife's used it, it, it does really work but just for the simple fact that you can just use like real apple cider vinegar, can't put it higher than A, so it's going in B tier. So now I wanna tackle the digestive enzymes. And you're gonna find this interesting because I actually have two here. We've got the Lipo Gold by Enzyme Medica and we've got the Digest Gold by Enzyme Medica. So we need to make a little bit of a distinction between the Lipo Gold and the Digest Gold how they are different and why we have both of these on this list because there's a very important distinction. The first is that Lipogold contains the enzymes that we produce physiologically from our pancreas. This is amylase, protease, and lipase. Digest Gold contains these enzymes plus some other enzymes that normally we would only produce from our microbiome. So these are things like cellulase and also some other enzymes that we would produce on the mucosa of our small intestine. So this includes things like sucrase and maltase. So in the long run, using Lipogold is better than using Digest Gold because if you take these other enzymes, the ones that are in Digest Gold, what they're going to do basically is starve your microbiome of food. If we are taking an enzyme that has things like pectinase and cellulase, we're going to break down these fibers in our stomach and we're going to starve the organisms in our gut that want to eat these things. However, if you're really struggling to digest your food, say you've got SIBO, say you're intolerant to FODMAPs, so you've got a lot of bloating and indigestion in the upper part of your digestive system. It's really important that we make sure that you break down and digest your food correctly. So it's contextual depending on the individual's situation as to which one is actually better circumstantially. But what I'm going to do is now I'm going to rank them just on what is more likely to make you feel better faster because I think that that is really important. I think that quality of life is a significant factor in the healing process and if you can make your life feel better, you can endure the healing process a little bit longer. So for that reason, and I can't believe I'm doing this, I'm actually going to put Digest Gold in S tier and Lipo Gold in A tier. So I actually wasn't sure which way around these were going to go, but um, I can I can understand it and I, I'm going to stick by this. Digest Gold, broad spectrum digestive enzyme, goes in S tier because it improves digestion significantly more. Although I think Lipo Gold is better for most people in the long run if they need that pancreatic enzyme support, it does have negative influence influences on your microbiome. So for that reason, it's going down here in A tier. Still an awesome supplement, still strongly recommend it. It's still, it's still great, but Digest Gold is going in the top. I am also gonna do a video where I review just digestive enzymes. So if you've got a digestive enzyme brand that you want me to review, make sure you leave me a comment below. And if you're talking about a brand that has a lot of different types, like for example, both of these come from the Enzyme Medica brand, make sure that you let me know what specific product you want me to review. So make sure you leave me a comment, because if you don't leave me a comment, then I might not include the enzymes that you want me to review. So make sure you leave me that suggestion below. And if someone's already left it, still leave it anyway and give the other one a little like. Next on the list, we're looking at magnesium, magnesium supplements. So again, this is very contextual for the individual. If you have diarrhea, there's a good likelihood that magnesium would go in D tier. Magnesium supplements are notorious for making your bowel movements more liquid. So if you're if you have diarrhea already, they're going to have to come all the way down here. If you're constipated, however, you probably want to put this straight up here in S tier because not only is it going to improve your quality of life, not only is it going to basically fix this symptom, but also there's a really good likelihood that if you are constipated and magnesium resolves it, you also have a magnesium deficiency. And magnesium is used in over 500 different reactions in the body, including in digestion, including in your liver health, detoxification, stress management. So kind of in the same thought process as with the zinc carnosine that we had over here, it's a nutrient that can address a deficiency 
efficiency, therefore we're addressing it from a root cause perspective. So I don't think I can put it lower than eight here. However, if you do have diarrhea, magnesium's probably not for you. If your gut tends towards being irritated or being or being on the looser side, maybe magnesium's not for you, but just simply because of the fact that it is an essential nutrient and it does provide such massive symptom relief for individuals that are facing constipation, I think it has to go here. I think it very much deserves a place in a tier. Just as before, as I said, I'm going to do a separate video reviewing just different magnesium supplements, all the different types of magnesium. So let me know again below. What type of magnesium are you taking? What type of magnesium do you want me to review? And don't just give me the form like magnesium citrate or magnesium oxide. Give me the brand. Tell me what brand it is you're taking. Tell me what brand you want me to review. So make sure you leave me your comments below. So now, now we're going to do colostrum. And I have a feeling this one is going to be a little bit controversial because I took colostrum before and I didn't think it was very good. So I would put it down here in D tier. However, I have had several clients that have taken colostrum and it's changed their lives. It's been profoundly helpful and that puts it up in S tier. But I think that we need to take the middle road here because there are a lot of people that take it, myself included, and it doesn't make that much difference. I also will say that of all of the supplements on this list, I think that colostrum has to be the most expensive. Now, I know that probiotics like the D-lactate free formula and the 11 strain formula, they are, they are very expensive as well. However, they're very expensive because they're extremely potent. If you were to compare them to other probiotics and you were to take the total CFU count, so like the total dose, and divide it by the cost, you'd actually find that these are some of the cheapest probiotics that you would be able to buy. But when it comes to colostrum, all of the good quality colostrum supplements are absurdly expensive. Like this little pot that we've got here, I, I know it's a bit hard to see. I think it's like a 400, 350 gram pot. This is like 90 or 120 pounds so that's like 130 140 dollars it's really expensive and you could go through this very easily in less than a month as opposed to these the probiotics this is like three or even six months some people even a year because the dose that you start with can be so small but colostrum extremely expensive but when i'm looking at it and i'm seeing colostrum next to apple cider vinegar it really makes me think it needs to come down one more tier. I just don't think colostrum is on the same level as, as apple cider vinegar. I don't. No, I'm going to put it in B tier. I'm putting it, I'm putting it here. I'm not 100% sure, but I don't want to think about it anymore because it's really hard decision. So I'm just going to put it in B tier and you tell me what you think. Would you put colostrum in B tier? Would you put it in C tier? I can't decide. I'm just going to put it in B tier and we're going to leave it there. We're going to move on. So now we've got one of my favorites. We're going to do the 11 strain probiotics. Personally, I would just put them straight in S tier because they are like this D-lactate free probiotic, but they're better. They're exactly the same. They're the same potency. They just have five more strains of probiotics. So my mind thinks more is better, but that's actually not always true. What I will say is I've had many clients that start on the D-lactate free formula and we transition them to the 11 strain formula. So we start here and we go over to this one. And what I can say is these 11 strain formula is significantly less well tolerated than the D-lactate free formula. So it depends how you're looking at this, because in one way, that's better. It means it's stronger. It means it's having more of an impact on shifting the microbiome. But in another way, it's worse because less people can use it. Less people can get benefit from it. And it's more tricky to use. So I think for that reason, I'm going to put it down in A tier. So even though on paper, objectively, this 11 string probiotic is better than the D-lactate free formula. Practically, when it comes to application, it's more difficult, it's more challenging. So for that reason, I'm gonna stick it down here in A tier. This next one is very tricky. So as you get on here, it says inulin, but I'm actually using this as a placeholder for all of the different types of prebiotics. So this inulin represents inulin, it represents oligosaccharides, it represents PHGG, partially hydrolyzed guar gum, it represents HMOs, human milk oligosaccharides. This is all of the different types of prebiotics. And I, I know there are different people that have different opinions. Some people think probiotics are a waste of time and that pre uh, prebiotics have a significantly more powerful influence on the microbiome. And for that reason, they would go straight up in S tier. Another train of thought is that a lot of people struggle with fibers. And this is why the carnivore diet has become so popular. And these people would say fiber, huh? That's a loser. I'm going to stick it down in D tier. I don't need fiber. I can just eat meat and I still poop great. But I actually tend towards thinking that there's a lot of truth in the fact that prebiotic fibers do modulate the microbiome significantly. Maybe equally or maybe even I'm really starting to come around to this idea that they do influence the microbiome as much or more than probiotics. However, by the same train of thought, yeah, the D-lactate-free formula is nice. The 11 strain is harder to implement. 
lots of people struggle with different types of fibers. Now, especially if you were looking at insulin and fructooligosaccharides and like the FODMAP fibers, if it were just that, I would put them probably in D tier because they, I feel like they don't really work for most people. They're very hard to add and they're tricky. But when you start to think about the other fibers, the lactulose, you know, you're bringing it up, the PHGG, you're bringing it up, the human milk oligosaccharides, you're bringing it up. Do I think it deserves a spot in A tier? I kind of feel like A tier is getting a bit crowded. You know, we've got five supplements all the way up here in A tier. So I really, I don't want to put it up here because it's already looking quite crowded, but I can't deny that prebiotics do modulate the microbiome. I do have a side note here though, and that is, I do prefer to get prebiotics from the diet where you can. The thing that's really tricky though is many of those dietary fibers are the more difficult fibers. These are the cellulose, the FODMAP fibers, the galacto-oligosaccharides, fructo-oligosaccharides, the inulin. So the fact that some of these prebiotics are better tolerated, like the lactulose, the PHGG, the HMOs, the human milk oligosaccharides, I actually think that with those considerations, it does deserve a spot in A tier and prebiotic fibers would go, they deserve their spot in A tier. Next, and this is a second from last, we've got omega-3s. So this is a really tricky one again, because as I've said, omega-3s, essential nutrient, essential nutrients, they need to be in A tier. But what I'm going to say is that omega-3s, whilst they are an essential nutrient, it's significantly easier to get your essential omega-3s from your diet than it is from some other nutrients. Say, for example, like the magnesium that we have here and the zinc carnosine that we have here. So I'm actually thinking that the omegas should come down to B tier, because for one, Personally, I wouldn't even put omega-3s on a gut health supplements tier list. However, I was asking ChatGPT, I asked some people on my Facebook, and people were saying omega-3s were one of their favorite gut health supplements. And I was thinking, omega-3 is not a gut health supplement. I would not put it here. However, they've said it improves the inflammation, it helps the digestive system. So, okay, it earned a spot on the list, but I don't think I can put it up on A. I really think it should go in B tier because you can get omega-3s from so many different things in your diet. You can get them from good quality eggs. You can get them from grass-fed meat. One of the best places to get them is from the fatty fish, so like the mackerel, the sardines. And I think these foods are actually really good, and I think that they're they're nice, and they're quite accessible. So for that reason, I don't think I can put it up in A tier with that same logic. And look how crowded A tier is. Like, this is way too big. So let's stick it down here. How do you feel about that? How do you feel about omega-3s in B tier? Remember, a gut health supplement, okay? If we were talking about anti-inflammatory supplements, which again, I can do a video on that, probably omega-3s would be up in S tier. Again, essential nutrient, and they're very powerful antioxidants, and they're really good for inflammation. But we're not talking about antioxidants and inflammation. We're talking about gut health. So with all of that in mind, I think that B tier is the final resting place for omega-3s. So we're gonna leave him here. Next, the colostrum, which I'm still not sure if it should be there, but it's there, so we're gonna leave it. So. Finally, and I actually have a secret additional supplement that I just realized I forgot to put on this list, but we're gonna do that afterwards. But final one that we have here, DGL. So DGL, it's not just DGL that I'm including in this supplement. This is, what I'm thinking about here are mucosal support supplements. So this is DGL, this is aloe vera and aloe vera juice. This is slippery elm and marshmallow root. These are your kind of mu mucilaginous agents. These are the supplements that are trying to either artificially replace your mucosa or support your mucosa in some way. So I, I'm really drawn towards the bottom of the board for this because I just don't think they really make that much difference. I don't think it can go as low as D tier because it's so many things. You know, it's DGL, it's aloe vera, it's it's slippery elm, it's marshmallow root. Some of these things work for some people, but I just don't see it often enough to want to put it any higher than C tier. So I think that this mucosal support is going to have its final resting place in C tier. And this kind of fits, you know, because you've got the bone broth powder, real bone broth, probably up in like B or A, maybe A tier. But the powders down here, this kind of does a similar job to bone broth. So... Maybe we'll just, yeah, we'll stick it in C tier. That's it, that's where it's gonna be. So I actually added the final supplement that I actually missed. So I actually had to pause the video and just find this because this supplement deserves to be on this list. And I felt like if I didn't include this on the list, I wouldn't have done a gut health tier list justice. Cause this supplement deserves to go in S tier. This supplement is betaine HCL. This supplement is basically a physiological preparation of stomach acid. So this is the closest acid that you can take that is exactly the same as the acid that you produce in your own stomach. 
the reason that Batane HCL deserves its place in S tier, and I'm not even questioning it, I'm not even thinking about putting it anywhere else, it goes in S tier for these reasons. The first is that if your acid levels aren't strong enough, your digestive enzymes and your bile do not get released correctly. This is going to mess up the whole rest of your digestive process. If you don't have strong stomach acid, you are prone to SIBO, you're prone to food poisoning, you're prone to all types of parasites and dysbiosis in your small intestine. This is actually, and not many people think about it like this, but stomach acid is actually one of the most significant parts of your immune system. Now, I know it doesn't start with immunoglobulin or it's not part of your white blood cells, but your stomach acid it kills more pathogens than your immune system does. Your stomach acid is the most powerful killing agent you have in your body. So without question, betaine HCL goes in straight in S tier. I've also heard countless stories of people that basically heal all of their digestive problems, including problems in their liver, in their pancreas, with digestive enzymes, constipation, and diarrhea. All of these different problems, I've seen these resolved just with betaine HCL alone. So in my opinion, the only real drawback, the only real downside to betaine HCL supplements is that they are extremely acidic. If you're dealing with any kind of reflux or gastritis or irritation in your intestines, you do have to be careful and they might not be right for you. I personally have a bit of a horror story with betaine HCL. I ended up taking too high of a dose and I triggered some gastritis in my stomach. And it's one of the issues that I'm still working on resolving until today. So as with all things, the dosage makes the medicine. It's very possible that with all of the supplements on this list, you could do yourself harm if you don't know what you're doing. And when I look back at my healing process, one of my biggest regrets, one of my biggest mistakes was with Betaine HCL, which is actually in the S tier because it is such a powerful, such a useful, such a broad spectrum supplement. So just summarizing this list for you so far, in the S tier, we've got Delactate Free Probiotics by Custom Probiotics. We've got Digest Gold by Enzymedica, and we've got Betaine HCL. This Betaine HCL is actually from the Now brand, but honestly, it doesn't really matter as long as it's Betaine HCL and it has pepsin in it too. So these are the supplements that I believe are the best value for money, and they have the highest likelihood of making a significant impact in your health. In the A tier, we've got Zinc Carnosine. This one is by Seeking Health but honestly, it doesn't matter what the brand is. Next, we've got Lipogold by Enzymedica. Really great option too. A better choice for long-term enzyme supplementation than the Digest Gold because of the negative impacts that taking broad-spectrum digestive enzymes have on your microflora. But these do have their place and they do work really well for the people that they work for. So that's Lipo Gold. Then we've got magnesium supplements, especially good for constipation. If you have diarrhea, maybe not for you. 11 strain formula from Custom Probiotics, a great addition after you've managed to build your dose up of the D-lactate free formula, but significantly stronger, therefore less well tolerated. So going in A tier. Then we've got prebiotic fibers. So this isn't just inulin. Inulin would probably actually be down here. This is also including other types of fibers like PHGG, lactulose, HMOs, and there's a whole list of other different types of very complex and niche use prebiotics, but they do deserve a place in A tier. In B tier, we've got apple cider vinegar supplements. Remember, apple cider vinegar itself would be up here in A tier. It's just because it's a supplement and you don't really need to spend the money on that. Just buy apple cider vinegar. Colostrum, I'm still not sure about this. There's a part of me that wants to just put it down here in C tier, but we'll just leave it there for the sake of it. So colostrum, not really sure. It's one of these really, really tricky ones. Help me. Tell me, where, where should I have put colostrum? Should it be in B tier? Does it deserve that place? Maybe you're thinking it should be up here, you know? I'm really interested. Tell me where you think this should be because I'm, I'm torn. I'm really not sure. Next, we've got omega-3s. I really think you should get omega-3s from your diet. Just don't eat so much omega-6. Don't eat like the grass. Don't eat the grain-fed animal products. Eat the grass-fed animal products. Eat the fatty fish. You don't really need an omega supplement. I say that as I'm actually taking an omega supplement myself. So you, they, they deserve their spot here. This isn't a bad supplement. Now you've got the supplements that I would probably discourage you from, from taking or trying because I just don't see as much benefit from it. So you've got Mega IgG. This is the mucosal support. It's replacing your immunoglobulins. There's nothing that this does. And this is also true for butyrate here. There's nothing about Mega IgG and butyrate that you can't get from a good probiotic and the right prebiotics. So that's why they're so low. Bone broth powder, again, not bad, but just make your own broth. It's not hard, just do it, it's, it's worth it. DGL and other mucosal supports like marshmallow root, 
aloe vera juice, these kinds of things. You just don't see it really makes that much difference for most people. Collagen peptides, they're like a crappier version of broth. So just make your broth again, it's very easy. And L-glutamine again, just make your bone broth. It's really not that hard. For glutamine and the collagen, you want more of the connective tissue. So think tendons, ligaments, skin, not just the bones. You want these other parts as well. So that's the tier list. That's where everything, that's where I'm gonna leave everything. If you found this video really interesting, one, like let me know leave me a comment below i really love making this video and i'd love to make more videos like this let me know what things you want to see i'm going to do a magnesium one i want to do a digestive enzymes one a probiotics one but what would you be interested in seeing do you want an anti-inflammatory supplements one do you want me to do a prebiotics tier list what do you really want to see and just finally before i finish up if you want any help with figuring out how to use these supplements correctly i'd love to invite you to come and join our community obviously healing obviously healing is a place where people that have already made significant strides towards healing and wellness come together to support each other in some of these strategies that are obviously healing so this video is a really nice compliment to this community because one of the pillars of this community is gut health we do also talk about several other things including fasting sauna functional training daily movement meditation so if that sounds like something you're interested in if you'd like to have a little bit of help a little bit of support from me and from a community of other people like yourself then be sure to click the link in the description and come and join us in obviously healing it's an absolute blast we just finished a community fast that we did actually yesterday the day before i'm recording this and it is so much more fun to do fasting in a community with a bunch of friends people asking questions sharing their experiences it's absolutely just brilliant so if you need a little bit of help with figuring out how to use these supplements correctly and you want a little bit more help with figuring out the other strategies but behind an obviously healing wellness protocol be sure to click that link come and join us i would absolutely love to have you i hope you liked the video i hope you found it really interesting and if you have any questions be sure to leave me them below take care and i'll see you in the next one bye